Hello and uh, welcome uh, to the France 24 interview today from uh, Taipei. With us today, the Taiwanese uh, Foreign Minister, Joseph Wu. Hello. Hi, Cyril. How are you? Thank you very much for having us in your ministry in the heart of the uh, Taiwanese uh, capital, Taipei. So uh, we could say that there is a huge rise of tensions, this is the least we can say, uh, on Taiwan from Beijing these days. So very basic questions, Minister. Why Taiwan? Why you and why now? Uh, Taiwan is very important in the sense that uh, it's occupying a very strategic location on the first island chain to the north is Japan, to the south is Philippines. And because of this strategic location, China has that ambition of taking Taiwan over. And because of uh, the Chinese ambition uh, in expanding its power throughout the world, uh, Taiwan is a must for the authoritarian regime in Beijing. And they've been focusing on Taiwan, thinking that the international community might uh, pay their attention to Taiwan and forget about uh, the uh, expansionism of China uh, in other areas. And therefore, Taiwan is getting all the heat these days. But this is a momentum from the, the Chinese government, you think? The momentum is now uh, re regarding the, the, the war of words against Taiwan? Uh, yes, um, but it's not just this moment. Uh, if you look at the uh, longer track of the Chinese activities toward Taiwan, I uh, started like three, four years ago, uh, that they gear up their pressure against Taiwan. Uh, at the beginning of 2019, uh, President Xi Jinping made a speech on Taiwan on January the 2nd. Mm. And in that speech, he toughens China's position on Taiwan. For example, he proclaimed that Taiwan needs to accept one China principle, and Taiwan has to accept the uh, one country, two system model and China reserved the right to use force against Taiwan. And beginning from that time, we are experiencing more and more military and diplomatic pressure coming from China. Mm. And if you look at their military activities around Taiwan, uh, they started flying more and more airplanes into our air defense identification zones. Mm. And that generates lots of uh, military pressure uh, against Taiwan. Other than that, they also started uh, experiencing some uh, uh, disinformation campaign in a very serious way, and also cognitive warfare, economic uh, coercion, things like that. And it's causing us some trouble. Toward the uh, beginning of August, uh, they used the pretext of Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. They mounted a large-scale military exercise mm. against Taiwan. Other than firing 11 missiles, uh, at waters near Taiwan, they also uh, assemble a large number of uh, airplanes and ships to conduct air and sea exercises around Taiwan. And they also engage in cyber attack. Mm. And our, info, our ministry was taken down uh, for a moment. Mm -hmm. And they also engage in a very serious disinformation campaign and economic coercion. So altogether, they seem to be practicing their war games. Uh, in order to invade Taiwan in the future. So, then, we, you, Mr. Minister, sir, you, sorry, you, you just pronounced the name invasion for you. This is something we can fear on the Taiwanese perspective in the middle, uh, short term or, or maybe long term. This is something which could occur. Do you fear an invasion from China? Uh, we are very concerned mm. about that possible invasion by China. And the Chinese government continue to talk about the use of force against Taiwan. And if you listen to the uh, very senior leaders uh, of the Chinese uh, Communist Party mm. speaking in international organizations, uh, they are using one particular UN resolution mm. uh, indicating that Taiwan is China's domestic matter. And therefore, no other country can intervene in China's uh, domestic matter, mm. including China's use of force against Taiwan. Uh, it seems that China is using all this uh, to legitimize its use, use of force against Taiwan. And to us, it's very concerning. Very concerning uh, in the fact that China is trying to uh, pull all kinds of factors together for a future possible invasion against Taiwan. Did um, the uh, invasion in Ukraine from Russia change also the perception, the perception of the potential war on the Taiwanese perspective? Did it change the paradigm? Yes. Uh, the war, beginning from February uh, the 24th, 
uh, was brought live to the Taiwanese people. Mm. And the Taiwanese people watched on TV uh, the atrocity of the war. And we realized that uh, if Russia uh, could do that to the Ukrainians, the Chinese may be able to do the same to Taiwan. And if the war is going to take place in Taiwan, I think Taiwan needs to be prepared for that. So right after the war began in Ukraine, uh, the Taiwanese people feel uh, much more than before the mm. urgency of the situation. And therefore, uh, their determination to defend Taiwan seems to be heightened. Mm. And at the same time, the government is also trying to prepare for a possible contingency. Uh, we want ourselves uh, to be prepared for a Chinese invasion, and we want to uh, toughen our military training. We want to procure more arms, especially uh, asymmetrical type of uh, weapons. Mm. And we want to work together with other like-minded countries like the United States and uh, other countries so that we can get international assistance uh, at the time when we prepare for this uh, possible Chinese invasion. But do you know that the experts uh, claim that it will lead to a much wider and bigger, in terms of, of global impacts, by the war of, in Ukraine, uh, to maybe Third World War, starting from the Taiwan invasion. Are you, prepare, are you preparing yourself for that? Are, you, are we bracing for that? Uh, of course, war, any kind of war, is going to be a disaster for the people mm -hmm. get involved. But you're and ready. We, we don't opt for a war. But if China is going to attack us, we have the will and we need to be prepared for that war. And we are preparing for a possible invasion by China. And you talk about the possible impact. Mm. Uh, indeed, the impact is going to be very serious. Uh, I can uh, use a few minutes to explain to you why we think it's going to be very serious. Uh, the first is on the economic side. Uh, a lot of people are talking about semiconductors these days. Uh, Taiwan produced about 62% of the semiconductor chips OEM. Mm. And if you look at the very high end of the computer chips, uh, Taiwan produces about 92% of the total world production. And therefore, if Taiwan is attacked and the semiconductor supply chain is disrupted, you can feel the impact upon the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, I'm sure you remember uh, at the beginning of the COVID, uh, there was a shortage of uh, computer chips for the uh, automakers. And of course, uh, France uh, is the country that produces a lot of automobiles. And that was a pain for the uh, auto producers. And consider that Taiwan's high-end uh, computer chips were disrupted. That would have an immense impact on the world economy. And let me take a few more minutes to explain about the geopolitical situation. A lot of people are talking about Taiwan as China's ambition. Mm. But the way I look at it is that, no, uh, China does not stop at Taiwan. The Chinese military activities in the East China Sea uh, have been driving our friend Japan very nervous right now. Uh, there was a contested water and used to be administered by Japan. Now the Chinese are sending their Coast Guard ships and their naval ships to uh, the region almost on a daily basis, and they started driving away the Japanese fishing boats, and that is East China Sea. How about South China Sea? Xi Jinping visited Washington, D.C. in 2015 and promised that he would not militarize the South China Sea. But China built several tiny little rocks and shores into major military bases, and they are fully functioning these days. And they are sending their ships and airplanes to patrol the whole region. And they also armed hundreds of fishing boats into mm. maritime militia to supplement their naval forces. So this is China's ambition in the South China Sea. Which is, which is reunification in the words of Xi Jinping. That's what right. Is, the what, whole, what is the your whole comment area. on that? How can you say it's reunification? What does it mean? Well, when he says unification, uh, that means that he's going to take Taiwan over uh, through peaceful means or by force. And that is uh, what he was talking about. But there's something missing. Uh, what is missing is the reality on Taiwan. Taiwan has not been run by China mm. for any single day. Ta Taiwan is run by itself. You know, if you are here in Taiwan, you understand that the Taiwan's president was publicly and democratically elected. 
And we also have a parliament. Uh, the parliament is also publicly and democratically elected. And we also have uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But we issue visa of, and passport. Of course, and, and gladly we're here. But uh, don't you think that the, the way of sovereignty is also independence? What is your stance on that? What is the government's stance on that? Well, uh, the very fact is that we are not part of any other country, China included. Mm. We are self-governing democracy. And this is the basic fact. And the people here in Taiwan are very happy with our democratic way of life. So any kind of unification, either one country, two system model or by force, disregarding the will of the Taiwanese people is an invasion. And that invasion or use of force is against the most fundamental principle of the United Nations. And I think the federal democracies uh, must unite to persuade China not to use force against Taiwan. And if uh, China is stopped, let me go on for a few more minutes. Mm. China is going, not going to stop in East China Sea, South China Sea, and Taiwan Strait. They are likely to go into the wide Pacific. Uh, their military exercises in the past couple of years have gone through the first island chain to go deep into the Pacific Ocean. And in June, they signed a security agreement with the Solomon Islands, mm. which is very far away from China and very close to Australia. And you can tell uh, about the uh, Chinese uh, ambition. And it's not it. China is also ambitious in building string of pearls uh, in the Indian Ocean, in uh, Myanmar, in Cambodia, in uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, all the way to Djibouti. And they want to build their naval forces uh, in the vicinity of India. So this is a Chinese ambition. So if Taiwan is taken over by China, you can think about the rest of the uh, Indo-Pacific region. And I think the world, uh, especially the democracies, mm -hmm. need to think about this potential. And we need to work together to stop the authoritarianism from expanding further. This is a very interesting indeed interview and uh, very strong words from you, uh, Minister Wu. Thank you uh, very much for having us here. This is the end of the France 24 interview here from uh, Taipei. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.